Imagine a world where leveraging other people's money could turn you into the owner of one of the most influential social media platforms on the planet. Sounds like a plot from a fictional high-stakes thriller, right? But this isn't fiction. This is the story of how Elon Musk added Twitter to his portfolio, not just with his own fortune, but with a strategy as old as Wall Street itself, leveraged buyouts. Using a combination of smart financial moves and the art of using OTM, otherwise known as other people's money, Musk was able to buy Twitter for a staggering $44 billion. In today's Basic Thinking episode, we'll be diving into the details of this deal, offering you a look into the financial world of the super rich. From launching rockets to running electric car companies, Elon Musk's journey to buying Twitter shows just how far big ideas and smart deals can take you in the business world. It all started with the idea of a leveraged buyout. In the world of corporate finance, an LBO is a strategy where a company is acquired primarily through debt. Instead of using your own cash to buy the company, you borrow most of it. The interesting part? The assets of the company being bought often serve as insurance for this debt. This method's appealing to buyers because it allows them to make large acquisitions without committing a lot of their own money. But borrowing money comes with a line of debt that must be paid. The longer the debt, the more interest is paid on the borrowed money. So why would anyone take such a risk? The answer lies in the potential rewards. By using debt, the buyer can amplify their potential returns. However, it's a double-edged sword. If things go south, the losses can be just as magnified. That's why these buyouts were typically used for mature, stable companies with predictable cash flows, the kind of companies that could handle significant debt. The first notable LBO recorded was the 1955 purchase of Orkin Exterminating Company, but it was in the 1980s that LBOs really took center stage. This era saw some of the most jaw-dropping deals in corporate history. Companies were bought and sold like prized racehorses, with billions of dollars on the line. Fast forward to Elon Musk's Twitter acquisition, and the context has dramatically shifted. Today's digital age companies, like Twitter, present a different kind of challenge compared to the more predictable cash flow rich companies of the past. Twitter, with its fluctuating profits and reliance on the volatile online advertising market, was a far cry from the stable, mature companies traditionally targeted in LBOs. So how did Musk secure this money with the fact that Twitter had not been cash flow positive since 2019? Musk, a prolific tweeter himself, started by acquiring shares of the company in January 2022, and by April, he had become its largest shareholder, holding a 9.2% stake. This effectively made him the largest shareholder, totaling $2.64 billion. On April 4th, he announced this position on Twitter prompting Twitter executives to invite Musk to join the company's board, which Musk initially accepted. Why? It gave Musk insights into the company from the inside. On the other hand, the position also prohibited Musk from going beyond a 14.9% ownership stake and limited his ability to speak publicly about the company. This was favorable for the Twitter board and seemed like a win-win for both sides. But in reality, it wasn't. A few days later, he decided not to join the board and informed Twitter that he intended to make an offer to take the company private. Soon after, on April 14th, 2022, he tweeted an unsolicited offer to buy Twitter outright. Twitter's initial response? A defensive strategy known as the poison pill. This strategy is designed to prevent hostile takeovers. The drama that unfolded as a result would lead to several lawsuits up until October 27, 2022 when, in a dramatic turn of events, Twitter's board surrendered, eventually accepting Musk's staggering $44 billion offer. The offer was too hard to resist. In fact, it was a premium deal for the board and its investors beyond its current valuation at the time. But how exactly did Elon Musk get a hold of $44 billion? By securing investments from banks and wealthy investors looking to cash in on the future. This allowed him to use the old-school technique of a leveraged buyout. First, Musk secured a colossal $13 billion in funding from several heavyweight banks, led by Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Barclays, and others. The funding structure included $7 billion of senior secured bank loans, $6 billion in subordinated debt, and $625 million in bank loans to Musk personally secured by $625 million of his Tesla stock. 
Musk also committed $20 billion in cash equity, sourced from sales of Tesla stock and other assets which he had to sell. Finally, another $7.1 billion in equity came from 19 independent investors, whom Musk had to convince to invest in his vision of Twitter, showcasing the broad base of support for Musk's vision. While nearly half the portion of the sale came from his own stock, the majority of the money used to buy Twitter was borrowed. Now, you may be wondering why the banks would provide this amount of money in the first place. This is largely based on two factors. One is based on his past successes and the company's value, which, if it lived up to the expectations, would deliver a massive return. The second all comes down to interest. The investment's set to grow substantially over time, thanks to interest being paid on the borrowed money. Based on the $13 billion borrowed, Twitter's expected to pay upwards of $1 billion of interest to the banks every year. Depending on how long it takes for Twitter to pay the total debt, it'll determine just how much the banks will make. However, this anticipated payoff is looking increasingly uncertain with the way Twitter's performing. In order for the deal to be worthwhile, it still comes down to Twitter becoming cash flow positive. Yet, the company hasn't broken a profit since 2019. With interest payments soaring to nearly a billion dollars, it's put the company under a mountain of debt. That's not just a financial headache, it's a migraine for any company's balance sheet. Now, nearly a year after the acquisition, Musk's valuation of Twitter has dropped to $19 billion, a steep 55% fall from the original $44 billion purchase price. Fidelity, which invested $300 million in the deal, marked down its value by 65%. According to outside reports, since the takeover, a 30% drop in active users has occurred, a 60% decrease in advertising revenue, a 14% fall in website traffic, and a 38% reduction in app downloads. But the challenges don't stop at Twitter's doorstep. The banks that had eagerly jumped on board with Musk's vision now find themselves in a bind. With the plan to offload the debt to other investors, a common practice in the world of corporate finance, the banks are finding it harder than ever to offload as investor skepticism grows. The result? A hung deal, leaving the banks holding the bag on loans they'd rather not keep. And here's the kicker. If Twitter fails to manage its debt payments, the consequences could be dire. We're talking about the possibility of refinancing, or in a worst-case scenario, bankruptcy. With the company's assets on the line, investors and banks could lose out big. Will this lead to a future where social media companies are looked at as unstable companies? Or will Twitter, now known as X, live up to its expectations? Either way, Elon's personal wealth will be largely unaffected thanks to leverage buying. His assets are safe, while the companies and investors are not. And this is the art of using leverage buying, a resource the super rich have access to. It's more than just a billionaire's play. It's a masterclass in leveraging the old ways for new gains. Musk's Twitter saga shows us that in the world of big tech and finance, sometimes the boldest moves are the most traditional. Like this deep dive into finance? Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe for more. Tap that bell icon for the latest updates. See you in the next video.